one of the things that, that 9-11 did, it, as so many people have said, is probably the, it was the end of American innocence. Uh, we were probably naive a lot about, about a lot of things, naive about how secure we were, naive about globalization, and we were probably naive about America and its role in the world. I think we thought, we all thought that, that we could do nothing wrong and we were a nation that was much loved. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, 10 years after the 9-11 attacks. Never had the U.S. experienced such an attack on its own soil. Airplanes used as missiles in deadly assaults on New York City and the Pentagon, and one brought down over the skies of western Pennsylvania. The September 11, 2001 attacks left the country changed, galvanized in the war against terror and on a quest for new policies and actions to keep the country safe. Fellow Stephen Grand examines the nation's evolving response 10 years after 9-11. We've come a long way. Um, we have killed or captured many of those who perpetrated the attacks of 9-11. Uh, we ousted Al-Qaeda from Afghanistan. We uh, have, with the killing and capturing of bin Laden, uh, in a sense, cut off the head of al-Qaeda. It is still a force. It is still a threat to the United States, um, but is much weaker without the presence of its charismatic leader. And I think the al-Qaeda narrative has lost any appeal it once might have had, any popular appeal it might once, once have had. Um, we've strengthened our homeland security and our intelligence gathering and intelligence collecting abilities so that the homeland, I think, is probably safer today than it was 10 years ago. You've also noted that over the same period of time, the U.S. has made some missteps. Explain that. Along the way, we've alienated uh, publics around the world. America's standing uh, is not uh, as high as it could be. Um, if uh, we, we want to be effective in uh, marginalizing al-Qaeda, in eliminating it as a threat, we need uh, most of all to bring on our side the millions and millions of faithful Muslims who practice uh, a peaceful faith and uh, have great antipathy for Al-Qaeda um, and they need to be brought onto our side and, and um, we need to be very careful um, in, in showing that uh, when we go after Al-Qaeda and others uh, we are bent on going after our extremists who are bent on doing harm to the United States, but that we have uh, no, no quarrel at all with Islam, a peace-loving religion that's practiced by 1.4 billion people. Well, just a moment ago, you said that the United States was a little bit naive prior to these attacks. Some might say the United States was arrogant. I think there was a sense that the United States um, could knew, do no wrong in the world. Um, we, we thought we were loved, that our, that our, that our principles were loved, and. Um, that uh, everyone looked upon our foreign policy as we did, that, that something that we were, we were trying to help peoples around the world. And, and you know, the, the, the truth is, it's a much more mixed picture, that, that the many things that we do do in the world are quite noble, and some are, are not so noble. And I, I think that, in a sense, has been a wake-up call, um, that, that we are not resoundingly loved in every corner of the world, um, nor should that necessarily be our aim as a nation. Um, but we do have an interest in creating a more stable world and one, one in which the United States uh, is looked upon as, as a leader and in, in which the United States um, can complement its hard power with its soft power. And soft power requires the, the willingness of other countries and other peoples to go along with, with what you want to do. The era of 9-11 um, has been defined by two presidents, that of President George W. Bush and President Barack Obama. How would you define the leadership of each man through this period? I think both President Bush and President Obama were different presidents for different times. Um, right after 9-11, uh, the nation needed someone who could rally them. Um, the nation needed someone who could show strength in a time when strength was needed. And President Bush, I think, rose to that challenge. Um, I think on, on the negative side, perhaps, uh, a lot, there was a lot of goodwill towards the United States after 9-11, and we squandered a good bit of that with our misadventures in Iraq, um, and that's too bad. President Obama came in, and I think his task was somewhat different. It was, to sort of, it was to convince the world that America was still America, even after these very traumatic attacks that had clearly had a devastating impact on this country. 
and he had to show that, that we were indeed the America uh, of certain values, uh, a, a benign superpower that was intent on trying to make the world a better place and was willing to work with allies and uh, was not, uh, did, not, did not harbor aggressive in intent against other countries, but was merely trying to defend its interests and the interests of its friends and allies. The U.S. has shown a great deal of support for the Arab uprising. Could this support be indicative of a new start, a fresh start with the Muslim world? And what's been very heartening about the, the Arab Spring is we're seeing ordinary Arabs for the first time in a long time being able to voice, find their voice, to voice their concerns. And what, what they're talking about are f things that we believe in as well, about freedom, democracy, jobs, security. Um, and that's, um, I think, uh, a voice that's going to drive the new Middle East. And it's something that we as a nation should get behind and try to do as much as we can to support the aspirations and hopes of a new ger generation of, of, of Arabs throughout, throughout the Middle East. Stephen, did the 9-11 attacks make us an America that is ever vigilant about its national security, um, totally aware that we could be attacked again, but moving forward with our own values, our own agenda? We always need to, to be vigilant in a, in, a, in a globalized world where anyone, even a small group of individuals, can do us great harm. Um, but at the same time, we need to be true to our values, which is that we are a society that has always welcomed new immigrants, has always been toler tolerant of religious differences, and um, has always uh, allowed uh, people of all faiths and of all nationalities to, to become American, full-blooded Americans. And I have full faith that that, that will happen again um, as we uh, welcome uh, more and more uh, Muslim Americans uh, to citizenship and to an active part in, in, in America, in American politics. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu slash mobile.